Hello, welcome to week nine. In this week, we will be wrapping up dynamic programming by talking about two more example problems. You may have noticed that the example problems we show become more difficult as the lectures proceed. So the two problems we're going to look at this week are not trivial. They're more challenging than the previous problems. They're also more interesting. Okay, let's dive in. In the first lecture of this week, we will talk about the longest common subsequence problem, which has wide applications in real world. Let's look at an example application of this problem first. We know a DNA sequence consists of four different nucleotide bases, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. We usually represent them using their initial letters. A, T, G, and C. There is a non-trivial problem in bioinformatics where researchers compare two DNA sequences to identify the correspondence between similar characters or substrings. This is called subsequence alignment analysis. Such an analysis can be used to predict structure and functions of proteins. By comparing DNA sequences from different species, sequence alignment allows us to infer evolutionary trajectory and see if species are related and how much they are related. So the problem is, can we locate common subsequences in different DNA sequences? This is the longest common subsequence, or LCS, problem. The LCS of two sequences is a subsequence of maximum possible length, which is common to both the sequences. What is a subsequence? Note that it does not have to be consecutive letters. Formally, we say L is a subsequence of S. If S can be constructed by inserting one or more characters into L, or equivalently, we can say we can get L by deleting some characters of S. For instance, horse is a subsequence of phosphorescent. Now, given two sequences, S1 and S2, how can we find the longest common subsequence shared by S1 and S2? For instance, S1 and S2 here have common subsequences. There is A, G, C, G. There's also A, G, T, C. There's also A, G, A, C and G, where A, G, A, C, G is the longest. As you can see here, we can pair common letters from S1 and S2 using these blue lines. And all the blue lines do not cross because matched letters must be in the same order in the two sequences. In order to solve LCS using dynamic programming, we follow the fixed steps. And as with any other dynamic programming developments, we ask these questions. First, can we identify a recurrence relation that describes the relationship between larger problems and their subproblems? Do subproblems overlap? Can we define subproblems using parameters? How can we efficiently store solutions to subproblems so we only solve them once? First, let's find the recurrence relation. Here is the thought process. Given two sequences, S1 and S2, we need to find their largest common subsequence, LCS. How can we reduce the original problem? How can we reduce S1 and S2 by one letter? Think about the last two letters, AM and BM. What if they are identical? We reduce the problem LCS that considers A1, A2 to A, M minus 1, B1, B2 to B, N minus 1. Then we just need to add 1 to the result because the last letter is the same. 
What if they are not identical? When the last letter from S1 and the last letter from S2 are not identical, it is not possible for both of these letters to be in an optimal solution because that would look like this. It's not possible that C and A are both in the optimal solution because the matched characters are not in the same order in both sequences. So in optimal solution, we either have C or we have A. So there are only three possible cases. Case one is when the optimal solution doesn't use the last letter from S1. So we can throw away that C here we don't lose anything. The LCS of S1 and S2 will be the same as LCS of this new string and S2. Case two is when the optimal solution doesn't use the last letter A in S2. So we can throw that one away and it won't affect our result. Case three is when the optimal solution doesn't use either C or A. We don't lose anything by throwing both letters away. So the LCS of S1, S2 will be the same as LCS of these two new strings by removing the last letter. Now, how do we know which case applies? We really don't know. That is the idea of dynamic programming. We don't know which reduced problem is the right one. So we work out all three of them and use whichever is the best. For this maximization problem here, we use the one that has the greatest value. So the recurrence relation is becoming clear to us. We reduce the original problem by taking out the last letter from both sequences and handle all possible cases, putting them together. Like we discussed before, if the last two letters are identical, then we have this recurrence relation. If the last letters are not identical, then there are three possible cases. We compute all of them, and then we choose the one that has the maximum value. This will be the solution to the original problem. So this expression successfully represents the final solution in terms of three subproblems. The same logic can be applied to reduce each of the three subproblems to even smaller subproblems. Now let's modify the notation so the recurrence relation can be used for any subproblems, not just the original one. Algorithm LCS computes the length of the LCS of two sequences. We assume index starts from one. First, we look at the i-th letter of S1 and the j's letter of S2, that is the last letters from both sequences. If they are identical, we reduce the problem to LCS i minus one, j minus one, and plus one. Else, we compute three subproblems and pick the maximum result. In terms of the table we always use for dynamic programming, there are two parameters we need to define a subproblem, i and j here. Therefore, we will be looking at a two dimensional table. The solution to problem ij can be determined based on the solutions to reduce the problem either i minus 1, j minus 1, or i, j minus 1, or i minus 1, and j. Next, like for all recursions, we need to define a base case or base cases. So for this problem, when either of the two sequences have zero letters, then LCS will be zero. We also need to consider when one of the sequences have only one letter. We can write it in a recursive way as well. Now we set up the table with S1 cross the top and S2. Recall that each subproblem's value is determined by the one cell beside it to the left, the one above it to the left, or the one directly above it. 
So as long as we have all these three cells computed, we will be able to compute the gray cell. This also decides the order we constructed this table. So we can fill the top edge, the left edge, and then we'll just look at one row at a time from left to the right. First, the base cases, that is, we fill the top edge and the left edge. First, we go from left to right for the top edge. Essentially, we're comparing the first letter of S2, T, with S1. And we look at S1's letters one at a time. For up to the first four letters of S1, LCS is zero. We don't have any match here. For the fifth one, we do have a T here. We have a match, and then we'll write down a one here. And then that one will be propagated to the rest of the row because we already have one match here. It doesn't matter how long S1 is, for all the rest of them, the value of LCS will be one. Similarly, we fill the left edge. We compare the first letter A from S1 with S2. For the first subsequence, T, A and T don't match. For the second one, A and A match. So we have a one here. And then that one will propagate to the rest of the column. Because it does not matter what the letters follow this A, we already have found a common subsequence with a length one. Next, we work on one row at a time, from left to right. Now we're looking at subsequence TA from S2 comparing with subsequence AG from S1. So we compare A with G. They do not match. We look at the surrounding three cells and pick the maximum one. So that'll be one. So we use one for this cell. And the next for this one, we look at the current two letters. Now we have a match, A and A. When there is a match, we look at this cell and add one to that value. So now we have a one here. Next, this cell, C and A, they don't match. So we look at the surrounding three cells and we pick the one with the maximum value. That'll be one. Next, we have this, T and A don't match. So we look at the surrounding three cells and pick the largest value, that's one. A, G, they don't match, that's one. The next one is one, the next one is one. Now let's look at the third row. So we are comparing G and G, they are a match. So we look at this value and add one to that. So now we have a two here. Next one, we compare A and G, they don't match. We get the maximum from these three. So now we have a two. Next one, we have two, two. Now we have another match, G and G. So we look at this cell, we add one to that value. We have a two here. Next, we have two, we have two. Please pause the video and try to fill the entire table. Finally, we know the length of the LCS is for our S1 and S2 examples here. But what is this LCS? How can we construct it? Like how we did before, we can work backwards from the bottom right corner and trace back to construct the detailed solution. Now, for the first one, we know C and A don't match. So the value five is inherited from one of the three adjacent cells. All three potential predecessors have a value of five. In this situation, we can choose any of them to step back and we will end up at an optimal solution no matter which way we go here. 
So let's say we go left. Now we look at the letter T and the letter A. They don't match. So we must have inherited this five from the three surrounding cells. Now all of them are five as well. So it does not matter which direction we go. Now let's say we go this. Okay, so next we'll trace back. Now we're looking at the letter T and the letter G. They don't match. So we must have inherited this five from one of the three surrounding cells. So that's from this one. So we went this way. Next, we look at the letter G and the letter G. So there is a match. We must have gotten here from this cell. Whenever we see a match and a jump like this, we use a purple color. Next, we're looking at letter T and the letter C. They don't match, so we must have inherited this four from this cell. The next, we look at letter C and C. There is a match, so we must have gotten here from this cell. So next one, we're looking at the letter A and A. There is a match, so we must have gotten here from this cell. Next one, we have GC, they don't match, so we must have gotten here from the cell above. Next one, we're looking at G and the T, they don't match, so we must have gotten here from the one above. Next, we're looking at G and the G, they match, so we must have gotten here from this cell. Last, we have reached one of the base cases. So we stop. And then by looking at this trace, we know where we did the jumps. We can find all the matching pairs here. It'll be this, this, the next one is this, this, and this. Eventually we know the LCS of S1 and S2 are A, G, A, C, G, and the length is 5. Now, what is this DP algorithm's complexity? Note that each element of the table is computed by comparing the current letters, then looking at either one or three surrounding cells in the table, all of which have already been computed. Thus, each element is computed in constant time. Since the table is m times n, this part of the algorithm that fills the table runs in big O of m multiplying n time, where n and m are the lengths of the two sequences. The traceback also takes constant time for each step. Each step either moves up one row, leftward a column, or both. Thus, the maximum number of steps of the tracing back part of the algorithm takes big O of n plus n time. Therefore, the overall complexity of this algorithm is still big O of m multiplying n time. LCS is a non-trivial problem. You may attempt solving it using divide and conquer or greedy, and you will find that it's very, very difficult. There's no way to split the sequences into left and right halves and be sure we haven't cut the LCS into non-matching parts. When we try greedy, the first match we find may not be in the LCS after all. The brute force algorithm compares every subsequence of S1 to every subsequence of S2, which is highly demanding. Dynamic programming, on the other hand, gives us a fast and easy to implement solution. There is a chapter in the textbook on the LCS problem. Please take a read and try some of the exercise questions there. I hope you find this problem interesting and please implement the DP algorithm for LCS. It is truly the best way to get a deeper understanding of these problems and their solutions. Okay, that will be all for this lecture. I will see you in the next lecture.